Okay, we're starting in the middle of 98 with this rational root theorem. What this is saying is that if we have a polynomial function, this might be like 2x to the third plus another term, another term, plus maybe 5x plus 7. So if this has integer coefficients, integers just being negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, etc., then every rational solution of f of x equals 0 has the following form. It must be a factor of the constant term. Right here, this is the constant term. Divided by a factor of the leading coefficient. Right here, this is the leading coefficient. That's always going to be true. It's something you probably haven't noticed, but it will always work. We are going to be calling P. It's going to be a factor of the constant term. In fact, P is going to be all the factors of this term. Q will be the factors of this term. So we're going to do this problem. List possible rational solutions for 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x minus 4 equals 0. P is going to equal all of the factors of 4. What are the factors of 4? 2, what else? 1 and 4. So I think it can be positive or negative as well. So it can be plus or minus 1, 2, and 4. Divided by Q. What are the factors of 2? Just what? 1 and 2. So now I'm going to write out all of my possible rational solutions. Well, they could be plus or minus all of the following. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I already wrote that. 4 divided by 1 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, which I already wrote. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus a half, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, those are the only possible rational solutions. So if I asked you, is 3 a solution to this, what would you say? No, it can't be. It's impossible that it could be a 0. Now, let's actually use our calculator and look at the zeros. I'm going to go to y equals, I'm going to put in 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 10x minus 4. And let's go ahead and take a look at the zeros. So I go to my table and look at this trying to find some zeros. I know the only possibilities are plus or minus 1. Are those zeros plus or minus 1? Are they zeros? No. A half? Could a half be a zero? Could a half be a zero? Guys, look at these y values. It goes from negative 4 to negative 15. A half. Is it passing by zero there? Could negative a half be a zero? It goes from a y value of negative 4 to 1. Could negative one-half be a zero? It could. Let's see if it is. Negative one-half. I'm seeing if it's a zero. I go ahead and I do two, negative three, negative ten, negative four. I know these are my only possible zeros, and none of these were. But negative one-half could be, so we're checking. We bring down the two. I multiply. That's negative one. I add. I multiply, that's 2, I add. Negative 1 half times negative 8 is 4, and I add. Was that a 0? Yes, it was. So this is one of my zeros. Yep? Wouldn't it be easier to plug the equation? You already have the equation in your calculator, so just look at the graph, and then find that intersection. Sure, I could do that. I wanted to show you a way to use the table, though. Because sometimes what they do is they give us a table like this, and they say which of the following of these could be zeros. 
So I wanted you to see how you could look at the table and tell that in between, uh, ooh, actually in between here, there's another zero possible, right? But could it be negative one and a half? Is that one of our options? Yeah. Negative one and a half? Um, no. So I just wanted you to see, like, we have a zero in between here. We have a zero in between here. We have a zero in between here, even. Okay? I wanted you to see that. So we know now that negative one-half is one of our zeros. Now, I'm just going further with this question. All I said is to find possible rational solutions. This is the answer. Okay? That's the answer. I just want us to go a little further and actually find the zeros. All of them. X equals negative one half is one of them. Is this rational or irrational? Rational. Rational. Now we're going to take this. This is our constant. This is our X. This is our X squared. So I now have 2X squared minus 4X minus 8 equals 0. What should I do first with that? divided by 2. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. This is going to be easier to solve. Are there numbers that multiply to be 4 and subtract to be 2? Can I factor this? What are the numbers that multiply to be 4 and subtract to be 2? No, they don't. So what other method could I use? Completing the square. x squared minus 2x equals 4. What's half of 2? Squared is 1. I add 1 here. This factors down into x minus 1 squared equals 5. So now I'm going to have x equals, and I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to end up getting, uh, let me keep it like this for a minute, x minus 1 equals plus or minus radical 5. So x equals 1 plus or minus radical 5. Those are my other two zeros. Right there. Those are my three zeros. What types of zeros are these? Rational or irrational? Irrational. Are they real or not real? Real. They're only not real if they have eyes. So these are the three zeros. But the answer to this question is just right there. Just taking a little bit further. Okay, guys, irrational conjugates theorem. If we have a function and we have radical b is irrational, this is saying if a plus radical b is a zero, then a minus radical b is a zero. Didn't we just see that here? This is a zero and so is its conjugate. Okay. All right, now this is one I want you to add on, the sum and product formula. If a quadratic has zeros of a and b, then the quadratic function is x squared minus parentheses a plus b x plus a times b. That has to be the function. I prefer to write it like this. The function is always going to be x squared minus the sum of the two zeros with an x after it, plus the product. So what this is used for is that they tell us the solution, and we're trying to come up with the function that has those solutions. I'm going to do a little example down here. And I don't even want you to write this down. I just want you to think. I want you to give me a number. Just somebody yell out a number. Two I like better. I want to keep them small. Give me another number. Four, sure. These are my two numbers, two and four. We're trying to come up with a function that has these solutions. Okay? Well, based off of this, I would do x squared. What's the sum of these two? 
So it would be minus 6x, and then what's the product of these two? What is it, guys? What's the product of these two? 8. So we would be saying that this function has these zeros. I'm not even going to factor it. I'm going to remind you that I could do x squared minus 6x plus 8. I can look at my table, and I can see, are those the zeros? Are 2 and 4 the zeros for that? Did that work? Yeah. What's another way I could do it, though? If I told you the zeros are 2 and 4, what would the factor have been if that's the zero? What would the factor have been if that's the zero? Is it x plus 2 or x minus 2? x minus 2. What would the factor have been if that's the zero? x minus 4. If I multiply this all out, I get x squared. That's going to be uh, negative 2x and minus 4x. That's minus 6x plus 8. See how I get the same thing doing it that way? You can do it either way. All right, let's come over here now. Page 100, 100. I want you to do this number 11 on your own. According to the rational root theorem, which is not a possible solution of this equation? Which of these is not a possible solution? Think about it. Meredith, what do you think? Um, I said B. B? Okay. Carter, what'd you say? D? Marcella? D? Okay. So why do you guys think it's D instead of B? What do you think, Sean? It's not one of the like, answers that we do that we do over here. Remember how any solution that we have has to be a factor of this divided by a factor of this. So 7 over 2, that's 3.5. 1 over 2 is 0.5. 7 over 1, so 2 is the only one that does not work, right? That's the only one that is not a possible solution. Number 12, find all the real zeros of this function. Jot it down. All the real zeros. Your test will be non-calculator and calculator. So we're going to say this is on the non-calculator part. This is on the calculator part, easy. Just put it in your calculator, find the points of intersection, whatever. Or look at the table. But what about if it's on the non-calculator? Does anybody have any idea of where we could start? This can't be factored. How could I start? Do we know what the possible zeros are? <clears throat> what are the possible zeros? Can we do them quickly? Plus or minus this, these factors over that. So what are they? Plus or minus what? Just say them out loud, guys. One, two, what else? Four and eight. I'll tell you that typically the zeros are the ones that are smaller rather than uh, the ones that are further out. The ones closest to zero are typically the zeros. How can I now check these pretty quickly? 
Synthetic division, right? I want to know if they're zeros. So I could either plug them in and see if I get zero or use synthetic division. Let's do one by plugging it in because it's easy to plug in one. One cubed minus eight minus eight, is that going to give me zero? No. One is positive one is not going to be a zero. What about negative one? I don't know. That's kind of hard to plug in. So I'm going to do synthetic. One. What do I have to put next? Zero. Negative eight. Negative eight. Bring this down. One. That's negative one. Add. That's positive one. Add. That's seven. Add. Did that work? No. Oops, I made it work, but I meant to put negative one there. That did not work, did it? All right, so then I'm going to have to keep on going because I'm trying to find a zero. So what else might I want to try? Two. Let's try two. Bring this down. That's one. That's two. Add. That's four. That's negative four. Negative eight. Ooh, that's close, but not quite. What do you think is going to work? Negative. negative two. So I do negative two. One, zero, negative eight, negative eight. Bring this down. That's one. And negative two. That's four. That's negative four. That's eight. There we go. So that's one of our zeros. X equals negative two is one of our zeros. How many total zeros are we going to have? It's whatever this is right here, so we're going to have to get three. We only have one. Can I now take this and find my other zeros? What is this the same as? This is the constant. This is the x. This is the x squared. So what is it? x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. I want to keep on factoring. Can this factor? Are there numbers that multiply to be 4 and subtract to be 2? Multiply to be 4 would be 2 and 2 or 4 and 1. Do they subtract to be 2? No. So what can I use? Complete the square. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2x equals positive 4. Take half and square, 1, add 1. What's another name for this, everybody? Right here, what is it? x minus 1 squared equals 5. Take the square root. x minus 1 equals plus or minus radical 5. Here's my other zeros. Bring over the 1, it becomes positive. 1 plus radical 5 and 1 minus radical 5. Remember how those zeros must occur, in, or um, irrational zeros must occur with conjugates there? So those would be the five, three real zeros. Okay, look at this. Write a polynomial function g of least degree that has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1. All of this stuff is kind of just like, you really don't need all of that. <laughs> this is the important part. The zeros. One of my zeros is negative 5. One of my zeros is 4 plus radical 2. Is it possible to only have these two zeros? What else must be a zero? Right. Now, I have to come up with a polynomial function. That means something like this, all multiplied out. So I'm going to look at these two, and I'm going to use that sum product that we talked about earlier. What's the sum of these two, you guys? If I add 4 plus radical 2 plus 4 minus radical 2, what do I get when I add them? 8. What's the product of those two? Well, they're binomials, so I have to FOIL them. So I'd have to do the first times the first is 16. The outers gives me negative 4 radical 2. The inners gives me positive 4 radical 2. And radical 2 times radical 2 is negative 2. So what is the product there? 14. So that means the quadratic that would give me these two solutions, can you tell me what it would be? x squared, now what? <coughs> Minus what? 8x, then what? Plus 14. There's the 
factor, the quadratic factor that would give me those two solutions? What's the factor that would give me this solution? X plus 5, good. <coughs> what would we now have to do to get the polynomial function? Multiply it out. Multiply these, you get x cubed. These, you get negative 8x squared. These, we get 14x. That, we get positive 5x squared. That, negative 40x. That is 70. So my function, g, is going to be x cubed, combine your like terms, minus 3x squared, uh, minus 26x, plus 70. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Use the information in the graph to answer the questions. What are the real zeros of the function? What do you think? What are the real zeros, guys? X equals what? Negative 5, what's the other one? X equals 0. But it says it's a cubic function. How many times is 0 a solution with that bounce there? Remember in your homework how if it bounced, what did that mean? That it had to be a solution? Right, the most multiplicity had to be even when it's a bounce. Even. Is that 6? Yeah, thanks, sorry negative 6. Okay, but back to this. When we have that bounce, this has to have a multiplicity of 2 if it's a cubic function. It could be 4. Why can't it be 4, though? It's too big, right? Because we've got to have a cubic function. Okay, so now it says to write an equation of the cubic function in factored form. We like to see factored form. It's easier. So the function... Anybody know how I would write this factor if x equals 0? Just x, right? But what has to happen to it? It has to get squared. squared. And then if my 0 was negative 6, what's that 0 going to be? Not just 6, but x plus or minus 6 plus 6, that would give me the solution. So this is factored form, and that's what they asked for. All right? Ooh, that's a lot of stuff, huh? All right, so the big things, knowing the possible rational roots, that, the, that division type of thing there, knowing that when we have irrational uh, solutions, that the conjugates must be zeros, and then also knowing this formula here. This is a big one. It's very helpful. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at your homework. So you have this worksheet. Is this how you guys started number one? The length times width times height, the volume had to be 945. We're looking at the back of it. Is that how you guys did it? I saw people in the other class, maybe you guys did this too. Because this was not equal to zero, they had to multiply all this out. Not a great choice for this kind of problem though. How else could I do this problem? Am I allowed to say x has to be 945? No. We can't do that. So I can't set each of these equal to 0. This is a problem, guys, where I would just get out my graphing calculator. I'd put this function in. Because it's too difficult to do by multiplying it all out. Did, how many people did multiply it all out and got it to work? I am very proud of your persistence. That's great. 
So they had to multiply all that out, get subtract 945, get a set equal to zero, factor again. That's great. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just do it on the calculator. I'm going to have to make my window go up to 1,000. And here's y equals 945 coming in. There's my cubic function, and there's the y equals 945. Can you see how I'm just trying to find that point of intersection? And when I solve this, enter, 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 I get x equals 3. So 3 then is going to have to be uh, 3 meters is the height. And then I plug in to find the length, and I plug in to find the width. That's just one way to do it. Number two, A should have been 60, B was 33, C was 6. Number three, X equals 2, that's multiplicity of 2, it's a bounce. Negative 3 went through because multiplicity is odd. X equals negative 5, multiplicity is 2, that's going to be a bounce. And then you can check your answer on all the rest of these. <coughs> Front. Did you run across any problems that maybe didn't work on the front? Oh, you didn't understand it? Okay, I'll explain that in a minute. But did you guys notice how number nine actually couldn't factor the way it was written? Yeah, but if you changed it to subtraction and made this plus four, then it would work out the way they wanted it to work out. So that was just a typo. That should have been a subtraction. So the joke was, who wrote the book Split Personalities, and it was Jacqueline Hyde. Do you get that now? Jekyll and Hyde, Jekyll and Hyde. No? <laughs> Have you guys heard of the book, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Okay, that's what it is. All right. Any questions? Anything you want me to factor on the front? All right, we'll roll the dice for that.